Hi everybody! This video is going to help you get started on the next phase of working on your CREATE project, particularly the part that um, will focus on what's called 2C and 2B from the instructions, and it's about the abstraction and the algorithm. And in this video, we are mostly going to talk about the algorithm with the two smaller algorithms in it. So over here, um, this is Google Classroom, and over here I'm going to be showing you your original project, so the Create Number 1. The Practice Create Number 1 project was when you worked with a partner and you filled out a document that looks like this. Um, and like I said today, we're going to be talking about 2C and 2D. That was the one for 2A and 2B, which you'll do after. So when you're looking at this document, this is what you originally used. You put a screenshot here for 2C. You put a response here. This is the um, rubric from AP Computer Science Principles. And then this is for the 2D part. So the first thing you should do is take that out and very carefully review the revision and the comments because those will be really helpful to you through this process. During this week, you really need to concentrate on working on developing the program and you do not really need to focus as much on writing these algorithms, but keeping in mind that you will have to have them so that you don't get to a point where you're pretty far advanced and then you don't, um, and then you'd have to go back and write them. So we're going to be looking at, this is mobile CSP. This is where you're able to look at lots of different samples. And we're going to look here, um, 8.9, we're going to look at some create samples. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start with the 2019 sample H and we're going to start by looking at the algorithm itself. So here you have an algorithm. Each of these drop downs signifies one of the points. So you can see that for 2C you get a significant amount of points because you get out of the total of 8 points you can get 3 points just from 2C. Um, and so let's have a look at this. So the first thing that is required is that the code implements an algorithm, that the student puts an oval around the algorithm within the entire code piece, which you don't have to worry about right now, and that if they're using a template that the screenshot is provided directly within the response. What they mean by that is if you, and you will be, using a template that looks like this, you included the screenshot, and then you have the algorithm, I'm sorry, the algorithm screenshot here, and then the explanation here. So this person got one point because they met each of those pieces. Here in the second section, it has to implement an algorithm that uses math or logic. It has to explain how the algorithm functions, and it has to describe what the selected algorithm does in relation to ov the overall prop program. So here's the student's response, which you can read in your own time, but what you want to make sure is that you have done each of those things for your algorithm. Then the third point, you can see that this particular student didn't get the third point. In the third point, again, there are three things you have to do. One is um, demonstrate that the code implements an algorithm that has at least two or more algorithms, which we've been calling sub-algorithms. You have to make sure that one of those algorithms uses math or logic. And lastly, how it, each of the two sub-algorithms function independently. You can see here that the student lost this point. So it says the reader might be able to identify. By reader, they mean the grader or the person that is grading this response to decide whether or not you get the points. So maybe that they can 
identify the sub algorithms, but the student, you can read this response in your own time, the student has to clearly identify the sub algorithms and they did not do that. So let's look one more time at what that algorithm looks like and you know exactly where to find these so you could spend more time looking at them. And as we've talked about in class, this is, in this case, this is the greater algorithm. This is one of the subs. This is the second sub. Um, and it's the student's responsibility to explain how each of those subs function. We're going to look at this algorithm. Um, it's a much more complicated algorithm. And when you look at this one, it might be a little bit easier for you to see that here you've got a greater, here you have one sub, here you have a second sub. Remember that an algorithm has to be at least two lines of code. So when you're asking yourself whether or not something is an algorithm, you may want to ask yourself that question, whether or not it has at least two lines. And again, you can see that, that this person, same requirements, so you could use this as a checklist for your rubric. You can see that this student got those two points. And in row six, the student also missed this point, and it looks like it was for the same reason. So the reader was able to personally identify the sub-algorithms. Um, and here in this additional explanation, you can see that it says covering the requirements is necessary to get this point. Two out of three doesn't get it. So there's three things you have to do for this one point. The two integrated algorithms from the overall algorithm are both if-else if statements. So that covers the first two requirements. But the sentence starter, one of the independent algorithms, is an attention getter for the reader, and this example follows it up with an algorithm that is not part of the selected one. So make sure that you double check that part. So here you can see it says one of the independent algorithms makes so that the user can type in the term as the other algorithm is displaying the definition as a flashcard. And then when you look at the algorithm, um, it's not clear to understand what that student is talking about. So during this week, as I said before, you don't necessarily have to have these algorithms written. You just have to remember that you're working toward that and that both if you are working with more than one person, each person in the group is responsible for having their own algorithm that has sub algorithms.